so much for tuning in to the Barbara Dean Franklin Show, Real Talk, Real People. I am your host, Barbara Dean Franklin, and today I have the awesome pleasure of sitting with my friend, Sherry Gay Dan Yogo. Yes, you got it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. How are you today? I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me on. And thank you for being here, taking the time out of your busy schedule. And I don't say that lightly because I know you are all over the map of the city of Detroit doing some great and wonderful things. So thank you. We want to thank you. I want to uh, share with uh, my viewing audience who you are and what it is that you're doing. You're running for uh, state rep. Yes. And uh, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what that entails, but more important, I want them to know you. I want them to get to know the woman that you are and why you do exactly what it is that you're doing. Well, it's a great opportunity to be here. I am running for state rep in House District 8 on the northwest side, side of Detroit. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a number of people that have helped to shape and refine and cultivate uh, my desire to serve. My mentor is Congressman John Conyers. Okay. And so just appreciative to people, great leaders, who have not just went on their own, but also poured into me okay. and answered all the questions that I've had and given me an opportunity uh, to basically to serve and to learn. Okay, and you're uh, serving and learning very well. And I know they are very proud of the work and the job that you're doing. You know, I know they're Thank proud you. of you. Thank you. Because, uh, again, you know, I, I watch you, you know, I, I look at the things that you do daily, you know, and you can, and I shared this, I think, last week on my show. You could, you know, fool some people, uh -huh. but you can't play with God. Amen. You know, so because God is watching as well, you Amen. know. And then, Sometimes when you are not who you say you are, you know, you fall to the left or to the right, you know, but you've been consistent, you know, you keep on doing exactly what it is you do. So let's talk a little bit about, first I want to know about your school and the students. What subject do you teach at school? Well, I'm a certified science teacher, okay. uh, K through eight, mm -hmm. uh, self-contained uh, certified, mm -hmm. uh, but I primarily taught uh, sixth through eighth grade science. Okay. Um, I started out in a charter on, on the more eastern side of Detroit, mm -hmm. uh, Depsa uh, also went to Detroit Public Schools and taught at the Honorable Irma Henderson right. uh, Middle School and had an opportunity to serve with her as mm -hmm. well okay. while working with Alberta Tinsley Talabi. I was kind of assigned to her as a page at one moment. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, I taught at Remus Robinson on the east side. Mm -hmm. So got a chance after leaving nine and a half years uh, working for city council, thinking I could go and make a difference mm -hmm. um, and, you know, with our children, because right. I'm a first generation high school and college graduate. So I said, you know, I want to go and make a difference uh, in our schools. Yeah. And that's what I did. I went to teach. Mm -hmm. I'm not currently teaching in a classroom, okay. but I am an education consultant. Mm -hmm. And so I do work with a, an organization out of New Orleans, leading educators, um, providing uh, professional development for educators uh, through various school districts across the country. So that kind of gives me a little bit more wiggle room to have my own time and my own schedule okay. uh, to get out here and advocate and fight for our children. And so uh, just being in the schools, mm -hmm. I had a desire of learning what, what, you know, I'm thinking one thing when I went in, but once I went in, I discovered a myriad of problems, okay. a myriad of issues. Okay. Um, in 2008, I was blessed to be um, accepted uh, to the Obama Fellowship, right. as well as an Education Pioneers Fellowship. Now that was really difficult uh, because who didn't want to work with uh, President Obama? Most definitely. Um, that was history making. Mm -hmm. But something pulled on the inside of me to take the fellowship uh, with Education Pioneers. I was one of 49 cohort members, the only one that was not from an Ivy League school. Okay. Everybody else was from Harvard, Yale, Stanford. And I had asked to go to New York because I lived in New York for about five years. So mm -hmm. I was very familiar with there. My second choice was DC. Mm -hmm. uh, but they offered me a fellowship in, in Oakland and San Francisco. And it was kind of hard, but I, I accepted. Okay. Uh, 10 weeks out in the Bay learning what education reform was intended to be okay. and what will be taking place uh, on our national landscape. Uh, and that's what I came back home in 2008, trying to galvanize and organize people towards what was going to happen with respect to our school system, mm -hmm. the various policy issues that would impact our schools, and now what we see is the dismantling of our schools. Okay, and so let's talk about, so why state rep? What, you know, what are you, um, what do you see 
you doing as the state rep for District 8? How would you, what are you bringing to us and you know, what difference are you planning on making? Thank you. Well, I consider myself a community organizer mm -hmm. uh, because having this experience over the years, uh, my career trajectory has included working at the city level, right. understanding city policy and the issues that our, the city is faced with and the laws and ordinances that go into governing our, our city mm -hmm. uh, from the city council uh, to the mayor's office, uh, working at city council for nine and a half years, I had an uh, opp uh, opportunity to interface with various city departments and understand how that s impacts the operation of the city. Okay. Uh, teaching in the classroom, I understood that in order to really change education, you have to either work at the state level mm -hmm. uh, to create policy and impact policy mm -hmm. from an informed perspective. We have people who are making laws mm -hmm. about education who don't have a reference point, right. who have not been on the front lines, in the field, in the classroom, knowing what the issues are uh, with respect to our children. And so they make laws uh, based on numbers. Okay based on data from tests, standardized tests, which are biased already, mm -hmm. but they don't see every day the day-to-day -day grind of what grandparents may have to take care of their children and what the social issues are. Mm -hmm. Children being raised by themselves pretty much in homes. And so my heart laments um, about that. And so I wanna be a voice okay. in Lansing that will fight for policy that makes sense mm -hmm. and that will really improve education for all of our children. Yeah. Uh, they deserve that. They and also greater civic engagement, mm -hmm. having an opportunity to serve as the education chair of the National Congress of Black Women, an organization started by the late Honorable Shirley Chisholm, okay. um, that, that opportunity has provided me a network of people at the civic level, faith level, labor level, uh, and grassroots level. And so what I've found over time, our community is suffering because the people perish for a lack of knowledge. Most definitely. And so it's my job as an educator, mm -hmm. as a leader, as a community activist to share information with people in a way that they can understand it, yes. you know, not just be a talking head. Right. So engage everybody. Everybody deserves a voice. And so I want to represent them, not my interests, but their interests. Okay. And then I was going to um, ask you to explain, because some people may know as a state representative, then you get to enact laws or so you will, um, when people have an issue, say somebody that's in District 8, if they have a concern, they should look and understand the laws and then they can, how do they interact with your office once you're in office, Absolutely. when you get there? Absolutely. You know, they will interact with you to tell you how you want them to rep, how they want you to represent them. So, you know, talk a little bit about your role, because I don't think that a lot of people know that as a state rep that, you know, you your your office is set up maybe to help with things like foreclosures and just different things that are affecting people that are in that area. How do how will people interact with Thank you? Thank you. That's a, that's a really good question and we could probably spend a whole nother show just <laughs> talking about that. But for one, when our when our community, uh, our voters mm -hmm. uh, ed, uh, elect people to represent them, yes. it should be someone, first of all, that has, has a demonstrated track record of service yes. and service to people, mm -hmm. informing people and engaging people because we're not just going there to take a job and then enact laws right. and then tell you to come along. Mm -hmm. uh, policy is made at the state level that impacts every area of our life. Okay. Whether it's our health care, you see what's going on with the Detroit bankruptcy, yes. because right now we don't have a majority in the House or the Senate, mm -hmm. and we have a Republican governor. And so people that are within the city of Detroit that are facing pension issues mm -hmm. that are facing the closure of our schools, the takeover of our schools with the EAA, health care, uh, the, the taxes uh, that have been taken away, mm -hmm. uh, the taxing of every Everything. area of our lives. Yes. So to communicate with my uh, residents, for mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. you set up an office, a satellite office within the community so residents don't have to reach somewhere far in Lansing. Okay. You should be accessible. Right. We should be, you see, you see me all over the community. That's I because do. I'm going to community meetings and talking to the residents mm -hmm. and coming to where they are. That's my responsibility okay. to hear their concerns wherever they are, but also make myself accessible. Right. Also through interfacing, we have uh, technology means uh, where 
where I send out an e-blast to a number of people, not just in my district, mm -hmm. but throughout the state, All right. educating them on what's going on and what the issues are. It's incumbent upon me to provide that as a tool, as a newsletter, to break down policy because everybody's not going to read the exactly. entire bill mm -hmm. um, that might be before the House or the Senate. So as a representative, I break that down and tell how is that impacting you? Right. I was in um, a local business yesterday, Crystal uh, Clear Images, and I was talking mm -hmm. to two young men mm -hmm. that actually work at a scrapping yard. And people could have assumed that they were anything but working young men okay. because of how they were dressed. Mm -hmm. But we started having a dialogue about this new scrapping bill. Okay. And they said, so what do you think about it? And I said, well, I mean, I think it's a mechanism put in place that could deter some stealing. And so they went on to inform me. They said, no, we've been working at this scrapyard for seven years. Mm -hmm. One of them seven years, one of them five years. They said it's not going to deter anybody because there's a way around it. Okay. Because people don't have to uh, wait three days for a check mm -hmm. as long as the amount of scrap they bring in is $25 yeah. or under. Mm. So they said we have people that are now coming in. They're breaking it down. They're bringing other people with them. Wow. And so they're bringing in scrap under. So, so but they weren't. They said nobody. I said, has anybody ever asked you? That's they said no one has ever asked us. Right. So I'm not afraid to go into the barber shops right. and to the, the, the lowest part of our communities and talk to everybody because they deserve to be a part of the conversation. And that is so good. And as you were talking to me and I'm thinking has anybody checked with them to find out what the solution could be because exactly. the people that are doing the work are the ones who really are usually the ones that can solve the problem mm -hmm. if we would take the time to take talk the time to talk with them yes yes so um, when I look at the Michigan House of Representatives there's a website and there's so much information out here and you know I'm guilty of it like they have a citizens guide mm -hmm. that tells you about the house the legislature the citizen links to you know different things so and when you can watch you can watch when they're actually in session okay a number of people don't know that they can watch that they can also look at how their legislators have voted on various issues mm -hmm. a number of legislators do send out newsletters so different people engage their uh citizenry different differently okay. mm -hmm. um some are more you know vocal and more present right. and some are more a little bit laid back so you know you work with city council and th then you have the uh, house representative and i know the city council is now in districts are you in the same like district seven there is district seven in the same I, and that's what's confusing no okay. not okay. no not at all actually i'm in city council district one okay. and for your uh, watchers your viewers mm -hmm. who have their voter registration card the districts are actually listed on oh, the voter card. registration okay. card mm -hmm. and so my district city council district is one but the state district state rep district is eight okay. uh, and so it's a little confusing I was at a meeting last night mm -hmm. where I took out a map and kind of showed the breakdown because in that community you had some people who are in city council district one some people who are in city council district two okay. and so it's, it's it's kind of confusing now for um, our residents, but more education and awareness and sharing the maps yeah. um, is helpful. Okay. So when um, when are you up for vote? When can people go out to the polls and vote for you? Tuesday, August the 5th. Tuesday. It is Tuesday, August the 5th. Okay. That is the primary. We cannot wait until November. Right. The state rep races are important in August. The primary is critical. Very important. If they important. don't vote for me in mm -hmm. August, mm -hmm. I won't make it. So I'm counting on each one of you to vote for me Tuesday, August the 5th. Yes. Put it on your calendar today. Yes, and it is. It's very, very important, you know, that we exercise our right to vote. You know, because we, we there is a lot of complaining that's going on. And the only way that we're going to make a difference is to make a choice. And that choice is to vote, you know, to go out there. That is our right. You right. know, we have that right to go out there and make a difference. Be the change that we want to see. Elect the people who, we, you know, because once we elect you, I mean, I'm thinking you work for us. You know? right. So everything that we don't think, mm -hmm. you know, you should be that voice mm -hmm. representing us in the Senate. I mean, in the Okay. Everybody, uh, there, uh, there we go. Next, <laughs> next, okay. <laughs> in state the rep, okay. state <laughs> rep, state <laughs> rep. You should represent us in the state, you know, for you, your voice is for the people. Yes, we the, absolutely. We the people for the people. Absolutely. I just got to say this, though. Mm -hmm. This is a day and time right now with the attack that we're facing in the city of Detroit. Mm -hmm. 
I can't express it enough that all voters have to get engaged yes. and really become a part of the process. We have uh, congressional districts too uh -huh. within Detroit. Well, they, we share other uh, municipalities within them, okay. but the 13th congressional district in which uh, Congressman Congress is the congressman of, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, this Saturday we're having our meeting of the 13th district and our breakfast. So if you're not engaged, please get engaged with the 13th district because that's where the information is shared okay. about how the precinct delegates get involved and how the everyday voter understand the process of government and really how to organize and make a difference. We got to hold the people that we elect accountable. So we can't just go in the ballot booth and then after the election is over, forget about who's representing us and then don't hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. Look at how they voted on our insurance bills. Okay. Because to me, I think Detroit has been get, getting hustled a long time a very long to be time. paying for auto insurance on a used car, mm -hmm. $200, $300 a month. We're getting hustled. Most and so, but if you check out the people that represent you, you can see how they voted right. and if they voted in your favor or not. Same okay. thing with our schools, same thing with our health care, our pensions, et cetera. We have to hold them accountable. And when they don't vote according to how in our interest, right. then we, we got to make sure we get them out of office. Put somebody in office who's going to exercise the at our best interest. absolutely at our for best the interest. people for by the, the people. people that's what that's it should right. be about we the people now listen I, I i just definitely have to um you know talk about you you know when when i put my um flyer out mm -hmm. to say that you were going to be here and my guy put on their politician I wanted to put praying politician in front of it because I just love the way you know I, I, I would just be remiss if I didn't talk about your faith and that is another reason why you know I wanted to um, have you on the show because it's so refreshing Amen. You know, it is so refreshing to know that, see, you can you can run for a state rep. Mm -hmm. You could do whatever you want to do. But when you're talking about the Lord, then I know <laughs> you're doing what you say you're going to do. Yes. You're not out here professing. I mean, I just know that. I just know that, you know, that you are you say what you mean. Yes. You mean what you say. Yes. You laugh and you joke, yes. but you don't flake because you right. trust God. OK, because <laughs> you are trusting in the yes. Lord. So um, tell us about your church. I know where you attend, but I I want to give a shout out to Thank you. Thank you, my Bishop <laughs> Charles H. Ellis III okay. is my pastor, mm -hmm. Greater Grace Temple. I've been a member of Greater Grace Temple uh, for 35 plus years. Yes. Um, and it's just having that opportunity. I have a very supportive church family, but mm -hmm. it is much of my 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 mentoring looking at uh, my late bishop, oh, David Ellis, and yes. his passion mm -hmm. for education and how he cared for his children, but not just his natural children, his spiritual children. Right. We are all his children. And the, the, the benchmarks that he set in place and Mother Ellis set in place yes. for us to subscribe to excellence. And, and it was watching Teresa, Teresa Ellis, mm -hmm. our music uh, uh, director for years. She's a math teacher. Wow. Uh, looking at the work she's done in education, wanting to be like her originally, mm -hmm. I was going to school to be a math teacher. Right. Uh, and then I realized I had such an affinity towards science mm -hmm. that I had more science classes than math. So I graduated with my uh, bachelor's and, you know, in science. Uh, but just my faith is what sustains me every day. I mean, mm -hmm. I have... I have uh, trusted God mm -hmm. uh, throughout this whole adventure okay. and journey of, of advocacy because sometimes I want to put it down, mm. sometimes I want to mm. let it go, mm. but I feel like, Paul, I am constrained Ooh, I by this great <laughs> gospel, gospel. because it's the truth. I believe that our faith, after we go and we worship, what do you do with your faith? Amen. And it's, it's important to me to go out into the community and to help God's people, to help provide truth, to help advocate and fight for them. And so God strengthens me. Uh, a lot of times you see my scriptures, my mm -hmm. my prayers, my Joel Osteen, my mm -hmm. tweets on mm -hmm. Sunday. That helps me Amen. every day because Amen. what we fight mm -hmm. is principalities and, and spiritual. I, yes. yes, and I definitely know that. And when you say uh, uh, Bishop uh, David Ellis, because he baptized me back oh! in like the early <laughs> 80s, 79 or 80s, and my girlfriend and her husband, Carolyn and Willie Logan, uh -huh. were members yes, of the church. Yes, and yes. so, you know, I, they would go over there, and I wanted them to tarry with me, mm -hmm. you know, because I wanted that, you know. Oh, we what had it was. the okay. <laughs> Yes, with most us. definitely. <laughs> they took me in that room, they tarry with me, and it has been truly a blessed experience. And I have a uh, cousin that is. Um, 
he worked for Mel Ravis for many years. Okay. Uh, Derek, Derek Head. I don't know if you're yes, familiar with Derek. Yes, yes, I do know Derek. Derek. Yeah, so he's... He's still with the city. Yes, he is. Yes. yes, he is. And so when I, you know, I need to know something, you know, if I don't understand it, I'm like, okay, Derek, can you break this down to mm -hmm. me? Explain it to me like I'm five years old, you know, because I really want to understand what's going on in the city. So, um, you know, what 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 is this going to do for you? How would being a state rep... How is that going to change your life? Well, I don't know that it'll necessarily change my life, but mm -hmm. I feel like every tool that God has given me, I don't mm -hmm. want to bury one talent. Right. And so um, if I feel compelled to, to sing, if mm -hmm. I feel compelled to talk about God, mm -hmm. and you'll see on my page, I talk about that, but I also talk about policy. Mostly. And so I feel it's my responsibility mm -hmm. to educate and engage our people. I see the attack that is against urban America, especially that's taking place in Detroit, it's my responsibility as a leader to bring greater awareness. Amen. But in addition to that, while I'm doing that, is to give hope. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to pull together. I don't know if you really pay attention to the, the, the four audiences that I reach out to. Typically, it's labor. I'm very supportive of labor. Okay. I'm very strong in my faith. Mm -hmm. I, I want to engage the civic leadership, okay. but I want to make sure that we include the grassroots people who have been fighting this fight in many instances without pay, mm -hmm. without any pat on the back. Right. And so we could bring those four groups together mm. to really set an agenda for Detroit. Right. And so it's that consciousness, it's it's that 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 drive to bring that unity together right. is what I feel that I'm compelled to do. Uh -huh. I'm running and I'm giving it my all yes. to get to the legislature, but I can't get there unless the people put me there and God desires for me to be there. Amen. But while I'm running, mm -hmm. while I have this platform, while I have this audience of people tuned in, mm -hmm. I got to continue giving him glory. Most I got to continue educating the people Most and definitely. I got to continue galvanizing and pulling everybody together. Amen. Well, listen. And there is somebody that is out in my viewing audience, somebody that's tuned in today and they don't understand why they're even looking at this show. It's, you know, it's some young woman, some young, some young girl who aspires, you know, to be, you know, something with their life. And somebody probably told them they wasn't going to do it or, you know, that it's impossible to be done. I just want you to look in that camera. I want you to encourage somebody. Tell them where you come from, where you're going and, you know, how good God has been to you just for Amen. a minute. Amen. Well, I'm, I'm Sherry Gay Danielgo. I'm the product of a single home in the city of Detroit. I was raised on a fixed income, but I know that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly more than anything that we can think or ask. I know that God's plan for my life and your life was formed even before the foundations of this world. The Lord tells us in Jeremiah, he knows the plans that he has for us, and it is to build us not up, not to break us down. And yes, we have challenges, we have obstacles, but that is not to break us, that is to build us. And when we go through those situations, it is through that that God strengthens us. So be encouraged and know that you have a purpose. You have a destiny. God has given you the gifts and everything that you need to accomplish it. All you got to have, all God requires of us is to have faith. faith. If we have that faith, we'll trust him. Mm -hmm. And faith without works is dead. So when you pull yourself up, you dry your eyes, mm -hmm. you lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God and he'll direct your path. He's done it for me through such dark times, mm. through such crushing times. Mm. And I know that he'll certainly do it for you. Mm. So trust in God. Amen. Amen. Now, as I look at your uh, strong women lead and all of the beautiful women that you have on your um, advertisement mm -hmm. here, um, I have a organization and it's called Women Empowered Crossing Paths. Amen. And, and that's what we are to do is uplift, encourage, motivate, and inspire one another. Amen. You know, because when we go through something, when we're standing alone, we feel just like we can't accomplish anything. That's right. But when we lock arms with one another, when you encourage me and I, you know, and then we have a whole group that is just really trying to raise our young girls, our babies, those that are out here, like you said, you were the only person without an Ivy League education, but you were there. You Amen. were right in the midst and of it. And then I was selected by all four Eight remaining okay. to be the commencement speaker. Okay. <laughs> See, so God. so all things are possible yes. if you believe, you know, if you trust, and if you just have a heart to do the right thing. Because it's not really about us. That's right. It's really not about us, but it is about you know how God has blessed us to be a blessing to other That's people. That's what it's about. That we can show people that no matter what you've gone through, you know, no matter where you are, 
are, if you just put one foot in front of the other Amen. and trust God, he will get you to that finish Absolutely. line, wherever it is that you need to be. So um, is there anything else before we sign off? Because I only have a few minutes, you know, the half hour is never long enough, you know, so definitely when you get in office, you have to come back and uh, sit down and talk. I would love to, sit and I would down. love to engage with your sisters and your group. Most definitely. Uh, any voter out there or anyone that want to become involved a part of a movement. Mm -hmm. This is not just for District 8 while I'm running for state rep in District 8. I believe that the move that uh, the, the call that's been placed on my life is to organize people throughout our community, throughout our city, throughout our state. And so if you want to become a part of more than a campaign, mm -hmm. become a part of a movement, please give me a call at 313-643-5323. Again, that's 313-643-5323. Okay, well, I'm going to bless the people um, because I don't know that if they know that you have a voice. And I'm just not talking about your voice in the Senate. I'm talking about a angelic voice that uh, you sing. Oh, man, I woke up the other morning, you know, and I got your uh, singing from the day before. And it just blessed me. And I know people in my household was like, who is that? <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end my show the way that I always do, thanking my viewing audience for tuning in, and hopefully I brought you some information that will be a blessing to you. I know for a fact that um, if you, August the 5th. August 5th, Tuesday August the 5th. The 5th you must go out and exercise your right to vote. You need to look at the people who are running, you know, investigate, do some research. And when you come to make the right decision for New District 8, I think you will be voting for Sherry Gay. Dan Yogo. Dan Yogo. You won't make a mistake. So I'm going to tell you from my beating heart, to your beating heart, I love you. You understand, okay? And I want you to take it away in song. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you can for me in such a special way. And why I praise you. I lift you up, I magnify your name, hey, hey, that's why my heart is filled with praise, oh, my heart, my mind, my soul belong to you, you pay the price for me, yes you did, way back on Calvary, that's why I praise you, yes. I lift you up and I magnify your name, hey, that's why my heart is filled with praise, praise. That's why my heart is filled, filled with praise. Oh, my heart is filled, my heart is filled. Yes, it is. My heart, my heart is filled with praise, praise.